Welcome back, guys. I'm here with Chris, Ian, and Connor. How are you guys today? How was practice? Uh, it was good. Uh, Very good. Uh, yeah. Good? Yeah. yeah Get good. some bucks deep. Pucks on it. All right, we're going to jump into our first segment and talk about UAA. Friday and Saturday kind of run through. So Friday night, seven different people scored, kind of showing the depth of this team as we always have talked about. You know, Chris, you scored. And then you've got some, like, assists from different people. You know, Juliana Pravnik had three assists. You had a goal and two assists as well. I mean, just talk about how Friday night's game went and how it was good to have that depth in that time. Uh, yeah, um, I thought we played a good game on Friday. Uh, it's nice to see everyone contributing too, putting up seven. So we haven't done that in a while. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just nice when you, you can just roll four lines and and get everyone get everyone going. And it's nice to see different people find the score sheet. What are you guys thinking? Yeah, I mean, all four lines got to keep continuously go because there wasn't too much special teams that game, and you know everyone contributed on the board. And it's good to see some of the freshmen step up and guys who haven't maybe played as much step up as well so yeah it's good when um guys are getting a role you know a rhythm and it just really helps out throughout the game so connor you've got defensive player of the week the second week week in a row can you talk a little bit about how your level of playing has maybe spiked and what's been happening to have you twice in a row to get that award uh yeah i mean um I mean, the teams <laughs> been, no, the team's been playing well. Yeah. I mean, even though we lost, we lost, uh, you know, two weeks ago. We slipped that one on Saturday against Bemidji, but, you know, I thought we played a good game. And um, yeah, we've just been rolling as of late, too. I mean, before that, I think we won, what, like six straight. So, uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's been playing good, too. And, uh, you know, all the D and all the forwards. So, I mean, credit to my teammates, too. So, yeah, it's been good. Uh, I mean, I haven't uh, just working on things after practice and little stuff, but... I'm um, just playing my game and um, yeah so it's been good good how was it to play in a different place because when you've gone up to Alaska you've played in a different place this time it was obviously different how has is that different I'm using the word different three times guys I need to like lengthen <laughs> my vocabulary but is it hard to play in a place you've never played before you know get a feeling like usually you know like oh I've been to this place I know what it's like instead of like maybe playing in a different sheet of ice I mean, going on the road's a little different than uh, being at home because obviously when you're home, you have your, your rituals that you do. You're staying in your own bed. We're going to eat at the restaurants we usually do. And then when we're on the road, it's everything's different. You know, we're not, every hotel we stay at is different. You know, the rink and the atmosphere is different. But, I mean, I think guys enjoy going on the road, seeing new cities, seeing different atmospheres, and that's fun. We get to come together, and it's a lot of fun going on the road and hanging out with each other for four days. Yeah, what are you guys thinking? Same thing? Yeah, I mean, obviously the ring changed, but I mean, at the end of the day, you're still on the road and you're still going to do things like you're going on the road, you're going out for dinner, you're, you're not sleeping in your same bed. So, I mean, I don't think it changes a whole lot. No? Yeah, I agree. I mean, actually, my freshman year, we practiced in that same rink, so okay. I was kind of a little familiar with it, but um, yeah, the, like routine and stuff doesn't change. A bit of a time difference, so it was kind of weird adjusting to that this trip, but um, yeah. I mean, that rink was good, so it was, uh, it was a good trip. Good. So we talked about Friday night. We're going to talk about a little bit of a difference from playing on Friday night, having seven different scores and seven to one, and then getting, you know, that 2-2 two -two tie. What was the difference in that playing? I mean, I know you're down a lot of guys on Saturday night, and it's a different feeling, but how was those two games just kind of different, how you guys fought through those as well? Uh, yeah, it's definitely different being down early, uh, two nothing in the first. But uh, I actually thought, I mean, almost we, almost we played a great on Friday too, but like even Saturday, we had so many chances. Uh, I mean, credit to their goalie played really good. So yeah, definitely a different game. I mean, you don't really want to be in those positions a ton, uh, but we seem to like the team. We like yeah, to, to, right? to be in there, I guess. <laughs> be, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's exciting hockey. Like it's fun to watch and be a part of playing in those close games rather than like a 7-1 game. You know, you're going to kind of win and, uh, sometimes it's hard to stay in it, but um, yeah, it was a crazy ending. So we're lucky. We we're happy to get the the wins. Absolutely, I think it's funny too. How, like you said, that you kind of have done it the last three series. Yeah. So, but what are you guys' thoughts on on that? Yeah, I mean, you never really want to play from behind, but from previous games, our teams always find a way to come back. Usually, I mean, for the most part. So we face a lot. We face some adversity, and we always seem to find a way to 
come through with it, especially when we had, I think, well, I got kicked out, Dewar did, and uh, I think we had nine forwards at one point, so to get a win out of that was pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely. You guys, like, we're a little low on the bench. Coach Hastings like talking about kind of the bench being a little empty at, during that point. And, Ian, you coming back, you know, Parker getting one in the last minute, minute, and then you getting one in, like, the last, like, second? Coach okay. Hastings talks about that. He's like, you don't really see that in hockey that much, maybe going back to the Bowling Green game last year. But, I mean, what was going through your mind, and you maybe guys as well as a team, Chris, not you, unfortunately. <laughs> but what was going through those minds in those second, like, holy crap, this is, I got to do this to get these points and to come out with this, you know, win or tie? I mean, the the last time I looked at the clock, there was 11 seconds left. And then I saw Connor shot, and the time has passed already. And so I just saw Connor shoot the puck, and I kind of just, my stick was on the ice, and it just came out right to it. And I just tried to put it in as fast as I could, and I looked up, and there was still about one second left. So it was, it was pretty fun. Crazy. I've talked about, we. I talked to... I can't remember when we covered the women's game, I talked to one of the girls and she was like, yeah, I don't really know what happened. I feel like I blacked out. <laughs> I was like, does that happen to you though? When you get the puck in that moment, in that time, you kind of just like reflexes take over, adrenaline takes over, you shoot and you black out in a sense. Is that like a thing or is that not really a thing at all? I mean, yeah, I, I think it can happen and mm -hmm. stuff, but, but uh, <laughs> didn't happen this time. <laughs> <Right? laughs> didn't happen this time, thank God. Too yeah. easy, eh? Too easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, she said that, and I was on like camera. I was like, oh, when my dad's yeah. like, that was a really interesting question. I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't play hockey. I don't go in those places where it's like hard to play. I'm just in track. All I do is like run and jump, and it's kind of like, okay, mm. it's not like game's on the line. Here it goes. This is what you have to do. But I mean, even getting like, your first goal of the year. That was a really like timely goal, as Coach said. And you also talked about big about adversity. Chris, you brought that up too. I mean, that was a big, big adversity game, and you guys to come together and to lose. You know, still have Dremko out and Michaelis out, and not even travel. And then you've got you know a couple guys getting five minute majors, and you know the, going down to nine forwards. How did you guys kind of fight through that as a team and come together to get that tie? I was cheering in the stands. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, wasn't, it wasn't a pretty one. I mean, we just kind of, uh, we grinded that one out. I think mm -hmm. we pulled the goalie with, like, pretty, with uh, a lot of time four, left. Four, yeah, maybe four, three or four minutes left. Yeah, I don't know. and uh, yeah, I mean, it was crazy because there was a lot of, like, I want to say, yeah, in that second game, we had a bunch of power plays. We were also killing a lot that game. So I know, um, I know like, we had 7D, and one of the D had to play four to, for a couple shifts. So it was uh, it was crazy, but yeah, we just kind of grinded that one out. I mean, mm -hmm. definitely wasn't pretty with guys guys going down, getting hurt, guys getting kicked out. So I uh, just kind of played desperate hockey and got it done. Yeah, yeah. How is it? How hard is it? Two defensemen in the room killing off two five minute majors in one game? Because usually a five minute major is a little bit uncommon in a game, but to have two, how was that to kind of fight those off? Oh uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, it's never fun killing those, but no. yeah, it's part of the game. So um, we just short shifts, right? Like 30 seconds, puck goes down and you get off. So we get, mm. get your rest. So we had, it was nice. We had 70, so everyone was playing, killing those penalties. So um, yeah, it's part of the game. Ian, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think um, especially with uh, those two fives, I think the biggest part is uh, keeping your shift short. No, not, not staying out there for a minute and a half, not getting caught out there and just when you have a chance to clear it, is getting it all the way at 200 feet is a big, big thing on those kills. So the last three series we've talked about have been really, really close. OTs going back to BGSU. So does that help a little bit though when you know that coming down the stretch and coming and seeing the rest of you know playoffs, going up to NCAA tournament, you're gonna have games like that where would you rather be more prepared and be like, we've already done this, we've already had a lot of close games, it prepares us, rather than just having like blowouts and after blowout after blowout and then getting a tough game and like, man, we're not used to this, we're not used to this. What are you guys thinking on that? Yeah, I mean, definitely throughout the season, if you're gonna battle some of that adversary and or be down by a couple and be able to come back, it's always gonna help you in the long run because like being in situations like that's only gonna make you stronger for the end, you know, so. What are you guys thinking? Yeah, I think that's um, it's good to have some of that adversity. You know, they're good at learning experiences, and you, you find out about it yourself and the team, and 
it's good at the end of the year. Yeah, I agree. I mean, hopefully by the end of the season we're not in those positions, but um, yeah, it's good to just kind of look back on it. If we're in, in, if we are, I mean, it's like good to look back on games and be like, oh, we've been here before, guys, so we can get it done. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've been here multiple times this year, so um, I mean, we have definitely confident when it's six on five. So right. yeah. <laughs> like I said, we don't want to be in those positions, but um, yeah, it's good to go through them. So coach talks about or not even that like how important was it to get those points looking at the standings you're about five points right now ahead of BSU but if you didn't get those points going into the game you would have been only three points ahead and especially seeing them February 28th and 9th down the road and you got a lot of hockey I know you guys don't like to look you like to look at the here and now but I know some of the audience is looking like oh man you know I know I've got this and we've got this but how how important was it just to come out with those points so you can get a little bit more of a lead on the Beavers I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ian's got this one Ian's got yeah, this I one <laughs> well I mean every point here from here on out is is crucial I mean you know everyone wants to win the McNaughton Cup every every team in the league wants to win it and you know it's a hard thing to win and with it's such a tight race with uh, us, BG, and Northern, and us playing four games against those guys. It's uh, it's definitely going to be a battle here these last six, so I think uh, we're ready to enjoy it and embrace it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, those those two points are crucial, especially coming to the end here, and winning that McNaughton would be, would be uh, awesome to have that home ice advantage again. It's something that definitely gives you that upper edge, but... But yeah, just continue to uh, go forward and hopefully not be in those situations again. Yeah, for sure. So um, last question for this one, but Chris, you had a goal and assist on, fr- on Friday night. And kind of being that player that steps up a lot, you know, so you're a little bit in and out of the lineup because this is this is hard. It's hard to be consistent in the lineup, especially when you got how many forwards you got. There's a lot of scratches on any typical day. So how does it feel to kind of step up and be like, hey, you're going to come with us, you're going to play and show up? Yeah, I mean, those guys going down and me stepping in, I mean, I knew I had some big shoes to fill, and uh, Friday I got the opportunity to play play quite a bit, and pucks were going my way, bounces were going my way, so it was, it was uh, felt good to get that one. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to wrap up the UAA segment, and then we're going to go into Northern Michigan preview. So the last time you guys were there, ma- matched up with them, you were over there. December 13th, 14th, and you won on Friday 5-2, but then you guys suffered a loss there 4-1. A little bit of a tougher series, I would say, especially going to their house. They're a pretty physical team. They're forwards. They're up with you guys in the standings. So obviously you guys know this is going to be a hard series, and that's going to be a hard series. But what can you guys take away from that series and that split to kind of bring it over to this weekend? Um, yeah, I think we learned a lot going up there. It was right before break. Uh, yeah, they're a good team for sure. They they got some new forwards, some freshmen that are, are fast uh, up front. So um yeah i mean definitely losing that last game before break kind of left a bitter taste in our mouth so we're definitely hungry for them this weekend and uh i mean it's going to be nice to play them at home i think it's a bit of a different game going up there i mean it's a good atmosphere too but it's a big sheet so uh, a bit of an adjustment so home ice here it'll be good we haven't been home in a while so yeah we're excited to get uh get them get back to it what are you guys thinking yeah it's um we're excited for them to come down they got some great fours um I believe one of their players is um, leading the nation in goals. I think um, so. That just it just shows you you know what, what we have to bring to the table. We have to be good defensively. We have to play you know play hard and play our game. And I don't think we gave them our best bet. And uh, I think um, that's something that we need to do is we need to play great both nights. Yeah, I mean obviously we split one weekend in Northern and have them at home would be good on our sheet and uh, with our fans. So it'll definitely be uh, be a big weekend and it should be a good weekend for the fans. Yeah, very big weekend, especially we just talk, we're talking so much about standings right now because you're getting down to the point where these points matter. Every single point matters. Going over to UAA and, you know, getting that tie and then getting that extra point in the second OT, those are the ones that are going to be better for you. So how, just how important is it just to get these, get the business done? at home and get your full three points uh yeah super important. yeah i mean <laughs> yeah just home games are huge uh i know we all enjoy being at home so 
Uh, like I said, we haven't been back. It feels like in forever. Just mm-hmm. we had the one against uh, the Bemidji, but we've been on the road oh, the second half quite a bit. So um, yeah, these are huge points. So we're we're really excited to play them. Is that really hard for you guys? So schedule wise, the first half of your like schedule is a lot of home games. You're getting maybe more adjusted to playing at home, and then this last half is a lot of away games maybe having one home game here or there is that hard for you guys to do just to be like okay now we gotta adjust and now we gotta do almost all road with a home game here and there uh, i mean yeah but it just makes you appreciate coming home much, that much more you know so obviously we're we're on the road a lot this second half but i mean now we have two more home weekends yeah, so back to back. just kind of gotta embrace it and hopefully get uh get all the points every weekend yeah you guys get home and then you got a break and then you go at uah how excited how important is it maybe to get that little break in there so it's kind of like essentially like ah sweet home break home and then bam you're off kind of a little bit of go B- bsu and then off to the races when we got a little playoff action so how important is it to get that reset button there for you guys yeah i think it's big um it's nice to recharge the body and uh, the mind and you know, with guys being injured right now, and uh, that's an extra week for them to get healthy and get back in the lineup, and I think that's just huge for us, you know, to get that little, you know, that last push here before the season. Yeah, and you talk about, like, resetting and a lot of with the injuries. You've had a little bit of injury bug go around. You know, you've got Mark and Jeremko and maybe Naprovnik because he slipped out on Saturday, and just people may be feeling it of the long schedule and the long series. How – does that af- does the injury bug a little bit affecting you guys right now, or do you have a deep enough, you know, team that you're kind of just like pushing through it and kind of determining to win some games? Yeah, I mean, we lost some key pieces of the puzzle, but at the end of the day, our our team's deep, and everyone will be able to step in and fill a role if they have to. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just look at this past weekend, guys go out and other guys step up. So yeah, we have a, a really deep team. Um, I mean, you hate to see those guys out, and they're important, like Chris said. But um, we have a lot of guys, so I mean, I'm sh- and they're just you know they're going to be excited to play in those roles in different situations. So uh, yeah, it sucks when you get hit with the injury bug, but um, you know we're we're a de- we're a deep team, so we're, we'll be okay. So you guys are won 19 of your last 23. What's been a little bit of the secret to success, and what do you guys kind of got to do to keep that streak going? Not even in this game, but within the next couple of series i mean just uh playing our detailed hockey doing the right things and what makes us good and you know, that's defending and playing hard and playing with pace you know our coaches do a great job of recruiting guys that can skate and uh it shows it in practice you know it's it's sometimes it's tough playing against some of those players yeah. they're so fast <laughs> But it's it's great when you're on the ice with them in in the same jersey and it's you guys can fly around. So I think that's our biggest you know. biggest thing to do. Yeah. So who would you think is the fastest skater on the team? You can be biased. You can be a little bit like, yeah, you know, I'm, I think I'm the fast skater. Or you'd be like, mm, Michaelis is probably the fast. What do you guys think, like personal opinion? Uh, I know it's yeah, a hard question. It's, it's either <laughs> Char- Charlie for me. I would say yeah. Charlie and or Mark. Okay. Uh, those two guys, but I think uh, that's a tough one. It I mean, is a if tough it's, one. Yeah, it's a with tough the puck, without the puck, that's different. Um, with would, your long would, stride, you're you're pretty quick once you get going. It takes me a bit to get going. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not I'm not anywhere near those guys though. So, yeah, I would say Charlie or Mark. What are you guys thinking? Yeah, I'm, I'm Chuck or um, Chuck? or Frenchie. Oh, Frenchie. Yeah, okay, he's quick. All right. Yeah, I'd probably say Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. Wow. Charlie, we're not going to tell him this, though. Yeah, no, no, Chuck, yeah, no, don't tell him that. Thor doesn't even listen to the podcast just when it comes on, so come on. He's probably tuned in right now. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, probably yeah. like listening to it now. He's going to yeah. be like, whoa. He's yeah. gonna come I, thought he was, I thought he was coming on. He's been in, on here like four times already. So I know. Yeah. He's been doing good, but I feel like, and like that's the thing, too. I was like, we need to get more players on. I remember asking you last semester, Connor, and I was like, I want to get Mackie on, and it never worked with your schedule or anything. I was like, yeah, sorry about that. No, I, I had mean, night class uh, hey. like at this time, but yeah. School first, right, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about getting back back into it. I kind of spun us off there. A couple more questions, and then we'll be good. But 
You guys are 8-2-0 and when playing the Wildcats at home, and you've won four of the last five meetings. I mean, does that have any, you know, does that have any weight with you guys maybe? Or is it just like, okay, well, we've won these, we've won these, maybe we've got a chance, or hey, you never know, it's college hockey. This could happen where you could lose both of them, you could win both of them, you can get a sweep. Is that, is that guys how you guys yeah. are thinking? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, no matter who you play in college hockey, it's, everyone's good. But, uh, I mean, for, the, for us, whoever we play, you know, we always keep the same mindset and we always try to play our game no matter, no matter who it is. So, what do you yeah, guys think? I would agree with uh, Chad. Uh, and, you know, anyone can beat anyone in this league. And <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> no, we, call him, <laughs> we call him Cheddar. Cheddar? He scores yeah. t- top shelf a lot, so we nicknamed him Cheddar. Sorry. <laughs> so. That's so funny, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, a little slip up there. Eh? It's, yeah. fine, it's fine. Hey, I mean, I. The audience loves to hear this. The fans love to hear these little like inside things. I just think it's really funny. Like I remember the first time you guys like called Charlie Chuck. I was like, "Wait, what? Like you call him Chuck?" But apparently that's like a common thing that happens. So cheddar, hmm. interesting. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about. I don't even know yeah, now. Like I'm not even said. gonna lie. I like got like caught off guard. Um, thinking just like I think we were talking about eight two when playing at home. Does that have any weight with you guys? you know kind of uh, like the records or whatever yeah, else yeah i mean i don't know i don't know about if it does or not <laughs> I mean, we don't really look into the stats a ton but um i know we're you know we have a great record at home ice so i think just being at home is a confidence booster whoever we play you know whether it's like north dakota or you know huntsville or whatever like i feel like we're we're confident at home ice so yeah yeah perfectly said yeah, I mean, we well got great said. fans, so yeah. we, we love yeah. playing at home. You know, yeah. you guys are loud. <laughs> Student you know, section. I know a lot of the I know, herd. Yeah, the herd. I know a lot of my buddies on other teams. They say they hate coming to Mankato. Really? So. That's really interesting. I always want to know what like the other team thinks. You know, and even like you guys going to different places. I feel like the worst place you guys could play at is Michigan Tech. Because their fans may be a little, <laughs> a little loud. I know they come yeah. to. The I, was, I almost called it the Civic Center. Okay, wow. The Mayo Clinic Health System Events Center, and they're really rambunctious and rowdy. Yeah, it's a fun place to play though. Yeah, yeah when it sure. gets rowdy like that. Yeah, yeah. You guys, I'd, I'd rather play. I'd like rather play in Tech, and Bowling Green's got good atmosphere too. Interesting. Other than like you know Anchorage, this past weekend, like it was kind of just dead. So yeah, vanilla. So. so you guys just like feed off that energy. You think? Yeah, makes the game more exciting. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's a good, like a close game, and you know it's always going to be a battle, it's it's always fun to be a part of. Interesting. Okay. Well, we've heard from the guys about Northern Michigan and UAA, so we're going to wrap that up. Thank you guys for coming on. Listen to the podcast. It's out now on Apple and Spotify, and we will be back next weekend, even though it is a break. We will be back. So listen in. Who knows what we'll have. Maybe we'll have Chuck on again. Maybe we'll have Cheddar on again. I don't know. Who knows? But thanks for listening, guys. Subscribe and have a beautiful day.